God wants us to have a better life than we have. It, I don't care how good your life, I don't care if your health is perfect. Is your soul's health perfect? Is your spirit's health perfect? Would you like more encounters with God? Would you like to be a greater blessing? If God blesses people or heals people through you, would you want him to heal more people? Would you want to be able to have lack in your presence and you can casually say, uh, what do you have here? And they say, well, just a little oil and flour. And he says, it's okay. It's okay. That will carry you. That will carry us. That will carry us for months, for years. How will it carry us? A jar of oil and flour, small amount that was left for the last baking. It lasted forever till the famine ended. What gives you that level of confidence? How is it? How can you have that kind of peace? Especially in the days that we are headed towards. Is it not best we prepared? The wisdom I'm bringing tonight is that we should walk in the light. That we should rid ourselves from all levels of darkness increasingly. So that we are suffused in light. And how to do that is don't conceal sins. Do not conceal sins. David turned his confession into a song that everybody could sing. So it's a public confession. That, that psalm is not a private journal of David. This is, was the songbook of Israel. They used to sing these things. At the beginning, it's written there clearly, of David, a masculine. So it was a song. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. They sang it. And he went on in it. When I kept silent, my bones were stayed away. He sat, they knew it was him. There's nothing private about this confession. It is a terrible trick. Remember, I'm not preaching like someone who is just preaching something I saw in the Bible. From the year 2000, 99, 2000 till 2024, I have preached that people should confess it. I have seen I have heard the most fantastic deliverances just from people. One of the most common things that happened, I found out even back then, was that when people confessing, if I asked them later, has it happened again? That is a it was very common that it never happened again. Once they came into the light in that area, they found favor. Proverbs 28. They made progress. They found mercy. Yokes are broken. In this church group, we've had tons and tons of people who have stood and shared from the lectern in all the places we've ever met. Testimonies of how they used to struggle. They struggle with being a Christian, struggle with living victoriously. They've shared over and over again how they had struggled, how they've given their life to Christ 21 times, 40 times, 16 times. If you were to ask me, so what's the major difference apart from a lot of the teaching of the word and the, just an atmosphere of liberty? I would tell you that amongst the greatest things we've practiced over the year is walking in the light. Not hiding things. When you see people standing and share things that, how many of you, when you came here, wondered, you guys are too open. You share things that you should be very embarrassed. They don't talk like this in church. Like, whether it's the testimonies about men, so whether it is, uh, I committed this or so, that, so, you, are, you were really uncomfortable. Oh, yeah? Raise your hand. It's normal. People don't believe. We used to print tracts, put a few portions of things people shared in their testimony and give people years ago, and people say it's a lie. And they'll tell, they say it's a lie, this is fake. Nobody can open up like this. And we'll tell them, ah, they stood in front of the whole church and said it. They say it's a lie. It's a lie. Nobody can open up like this. That's called walking in the light. We've lived it. So when you also hear many people stand and talk about all many things they are healed of, not this one from Sunday, the last two Sundays, prayers for healing. No, I'm talking about the healings. Who was that's right, Hosanna? Who, who was saying I've been healed from this, 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 listing things? Hope, Hope James. Now, don't think that those healings were all due to a prayer session, a healing uh, when the power of God was present to heal. No, a lot of the healings that have happened in God's lighthouse over the years were simple. Many of them will keep telling you, 
that they don't know when they were healed. But they are saw sure that they were sick with that thing for seven years, for 13 years, for 11 years. They lived with that affliction till it disappeared. They can't really tell. They usually don't link it to. So, except that the Holy Spirit told me to pray for healing. And it seemed a bit specific. But you, if you were here two Sundays ago, you saw it was, the meeting was over. It ought to have ended. I come to the end. I had heard it the day before. But I thought, well, maybe it's not today. Then at the very end, as I was about to end, then he, he, he insisted, pray. And that's why I prayed. You know, thank God I didn't know every, so many people would come out. But you saw, just a touch, 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 touch. Nothing special. But look how the testimonies are still coming. Because with God, it's not about anything. It's about, are you obeying me? Walking in the light, I am saying, is a primary way people get healed. I mean physical healing. So a lot of the healings in God's house, I mean of these big bad diseases that have terrible names. I've told you, we usually don't know the name because many of us Africans were too poor to have gone to hospital to diagnose it. If they had been outside the country, they would have diagnosed it. They would have had these many names. God is merciful that we don't know the names. It can block healing. When you know the name of what is worrying you, you may, as the doctor is telling you, this thing is very rare. It only happens to 2,000 people in 1,000 years. Bah. So you're thinking, where's the, where's the man of God powerful enough to heal me? So he blocks. So it's God's mercy that we offer. Many times you've heard me stand here and pray for healing. And I say, I pray for sicknesses you don't know about. And the only reason you don't know is because you can't afford to go and do a, a scan of, at that level. And see what's inside. But how sometimes you notice there used to be a pain. There was a time I used to have this dull pain or this thing. And it's no more there. You didn't know its name. You don't know what it is. But it's gone. Because God. So God has healed many of our issues in this house. Not from healing meetings. Not from, from quiet, normal obedience. I am sorry. I want to. So, you, now listen. You don't need to come confess to me. Or to your pastoral lead leadership that you did something when you did it to him you're living in the same house with him you took he kept uh, uh what bread he kept bread two small loaves of bread and you were really hungry so you took one you ate you know and then later on you didn't tell him it's not that you forgot or you intended but it sounded the way you heard him shouting it sounded like it might be a bit too serious. You might be really embarrassed if you say, oh, I'm the one that took it. So you keep quiet. You pass. You pretend I'm rushing to class. From there, you pass to class. You came back. You still didn't say it. Time passed. You now went like, it's okay. You say, God, I'm sorry. Oh. Amen. You told God. No, you can't tell God. Are you serious? Which God? Do you steal God's bread? <laughs> no, no, it's not God you're telling. Mm -mm. You tell him. Please, if, if you are so scared, come on. Or, or exposing sin is not about the method, really. It's about not walking the light. So you send him a message. You can send him and, blow, and off your phone after sending him because you're so terrified. It's okay. People have done all that in this house. You send the message. I took your bread. Do you know just saying I took the bread is, a, is an acknowledgement of sin? Even without saying sorry, without saying anything else. Say, I took the bread. Well, full stop. Now, of course, it's wise to say I'm sorry and all that. But my point is you just removed Satan's power to accuse you. You just removed it. He just lost the case. If he was in court saying, my Lord, that your child is a thief. According to your law, you said for when you steal this, you take double. They pay back double. I'm here to demand two loaves of bread that were supposed to come to him in the day of hunger. Those two loaves of bread you're planning to send through those two people to him. I lay claim on it. It's the law. You know, many Christians don't know how the law works. It's the law. And the law goes, mm, okay, it's about to rule. Yes, it's the law. May the law stand. <laughs> the guy just sends a text, just confesses. The Lord Jesus says, Father, they've walked in the light. Great judge of the whole earth. The matter has been brought into the light. He has acknowledged his sin. <laughs> Satan, matter dismissed. Bam. Yeah. That's it. 
Now in your mind, you want to add fasting. You want, we, we complicate. You make your whole life difficult. You, know, you have to fast for three days. You have to come against every spirit of uh, backwardness or spirit of poverty. You don't have a spirit of poverty. You have an accuser. Who does not sleep at night? The Bible says he walks there at night. And he's putting it before the judge that you are a thief. And the judgment of a thief is coming on you. It's very simple. Now, when you remove and you are no more a thief. So what was your case? Jesus says, the father says, let's see the cost list again. And the blood of Jesus are covered. The thing is white like this. So I thought you said there was. It was just there. It is no more there done Mat if we know these things why do we have secrets even if not for your quality of life now that we are on earth what about the future where he said he's going to bring out everything so there are two levels of wisdom that should drive you to walk in the light two levels if ananias and sapphira had told the truth to peter would they have died doesn't the bible say so it's clear. Go and read Acts 5. Uh, we sold this land, 23 million. Oh, but, you know, we there's this other property we're developing. So we took out like 5 million to complete it. I hope it's okay. I hope it's okay. This is just 18 million. We, we've seen what you people are doing. We want the work to go well. Peter would have said, don't mention, don't mention. Ah, ah, you don't, is, is it not your money? <laughs> Thank you. God bless you, Ananias. Where's your, where's Sapphira? God bless you. Thank you. You have done so well. This will really be great. You know, you know, a new contingent just came in from Assyria yesterday. The day before we had a group coming from Thessalonica. People are coming to the Lord every day. Jews from everywhere. And we're just wondering, how will we feed this one? So we and the other apostles, we prayed this morning. So you're the answer to prayer. God bless you. God bless you. That's how it would have ended. The guy came and stood there and lied. Satan went, <laughs> liar, liar. Judgment was passed. The Holy Ghost said, why do you lie to me? In this fresh church we started, you brought your nonsense. You'd be lying here. Like Achan. And dead, they carried them out, feet first. The same thing that was to be a blessing that they would have been whispering and Anas and Sapphire really tried it. Turn into a curse because of secrets. And there are people all over the world. This is their problem. Stop looking for big issues. Hey, I don't know what happened here. I don't know what happened. Oh, God, madam, you have given Satan mighty files to accuse you with. What's my counsel? Walk in the light. It breaks the power of Satan. It breaks it. He loses power. Make it a lifestyle. Don't, don't walk in the light sometimes. In between that time, you're not walking in the light. You, Satan wins his cases. And by the way, don't think that the moment you say, I'm in the light now, all the consequences disappear. Take a cue from David. After I confess that sin, things still happen. So the best thing is not to sin. But if you do sin against someone, confess it to that person you sinned against. If you sin against God, acknowledge it to God. Say, God, I've sinned. Stop. Don't, don't be saying... What did I do? And have no interest whatsoever in what people think about you. Always be interested in what God thinks about you. Always be interested in what God thinks about you. Always be interested in what God thinks about you. And remember this. It is better to be embarrassed. People, it is better to be embarrassed by people than to be punished by God. People will forget it. A story just came out by a servant of God. Mighty ministry. is going to shake the church again. This is a photo of fifth or sixth or seventh one. <sighs> High profile. And anybody that is in this church, you can see why I told you many, many years ago when none of this was happening. See why I've told you. Walk in the light. Do it from when you're young. So it will be normal. There will never be the embarrassment of being found out. Of someone exposing you. There won't be anything like that. That you were exposed. No, no. You expose yourself. Expose yourself. Someone comes to say something. They say, we know now already. He, he said it. She already told us. 
So what? Have you never sinned? But once someone else comes out. Massive. You hear it. So I don't want it. It's so painful. It's so painful. Multiple times. Happens. People that have influence over millions of people. Millions. And the only difference is that they, they spoke out. They, they brought it. Whether they brought it to light. Whether they are witches that they sent. It doesn't matter. The fact that you didn't bring it into the light. That's all. And all I, I kept thinking is, so what if this person had grown up? This, in quotes, significantly recognized man of God. What if he had grown up like I have taught my own people? Some obey, some disobey. I'm not saying our people obey everything. And those who disobey, they usually suffer a lot of unnecessary things. Facts. I'm saying it to their faces and they know exactly what I'm talking about. Listen, what if they had obeyed? What if, sorry, they were raised to be walking in the light? So you had a weakness, an issue that makes you do nonsense. People have captivity. I wish I could answer questions. People have captivities, bondages. Like in the Bible, they could imprison Samson. I've spoken about this many times. A servant of God, is, is Samson a servant of God? Is he anointed? Is he used by God to win victories? Good. Was he taken captive? Were his eyes removed? Were kings anointed by God? Was Saul anointed by God? Was he taken captive? Was he killed by the In the Bible, are these stories of different people God has blessed? Are the Israelites anointed, chosen by God, set apart? Are they his church? Yes. Did they ever come under captivity? Yes. You must understand, I've preached it for years. I, me, as I am here, so a servant of God, a pastor of a church, all those stories you hear about a man of God having a secret life and this and that, they are the fake ones, they are the real ones who have been taken captive. They have chains on them in an area. That's why they act a certain way. Oh, when this thing comes on, he's like, can't control himself. If you see what he does or what he says, some of them say, years ago, I talked about a, a preacher, you know, in, in the United States. And he would say, it's, it, it can be normal. Even unbelievers don't do some of these things. And he would take his phone and start sending lewd pictures. And what, how does that even make sense? Doesn't sense tell you that if you send someone something from your phone, someone else may see it. Even unbelievers. But you see, if an unbeliever has not been taken captive by a certain enemy, remember the Ammonites, the Moabites, all those ites. They are, enem they are pictures of demonic forces that come to attack God's people. So sometimes God's people, due to their error or the sins of their fathers, would be conquered by Midianites. It's a real, I want you to understand what's happening yet again, especially for the newer people. So that's what you see happening in the body of Christ today has always happened. A man of God, oh, he's like in the spirit realm, men of God are like captains of tens, of fifties, of hundreds, of thousands. That's what servants of God are. Now the enemy goes at them. He shoots arrows at them. He attacks them. He does his best to, because if you strike the shepherd, the sheep scattered. Did I just share that some time ago? Yes, so the person over Morning Star, I'll say this much. Morning Star Ministry. Boom. Now it's like that. That has happened within that. It's not the one you heard. There's two levels. So it's worse. That whatever you heard the first one is, is worse. The person that took over from Rick John, Chris Reed. And I'm thinking about it. So what makes you send text to someone? What makes you say lewd things. It's not normal. It's a captivity. Now I'm thinking of another man of God from many years ago. And he would send and you do things and drink alcohol. And another man of God, not this one. Even if he lasted for a few weeks or months, what was that? What is that? What, what comes on someone and makes them... It's not even though we're sitting late in the night walking in the office and I started looking at her and she was so fine, so... I didn't even know till you know, like the movies, and they start moving towards each other, they kissed. No, when you hear that it went on and continued for weeks or months, on and on and on and on and on. How many of you know if after it happened the first time, someone went and confessed? 
Who is with me? Who knows if after the first time, as you have been taught, first time, not even it happened, it almost happened. We've had our people crying, weeping, males, females, crying that they held someone's hands in a way they should not have held. That the girl may have not taught anything, but he knows what was in his heart. Those are the kinds of confessions we've had for years. Do you know the result? The brother never actually falls, ever, to, immor to immorality. It's in his heart. But the actual act, I'm telling you, I could give you names. And you hear someone crying. <laughs> Do you think he was born to be that sensitive? People who had immoral lifestyles before they, 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 they joined this place. No, it's because the Holy Spirit goes to work immediately. Bang, 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 bang. You know what you were thinking? Why did you hold a hand that long? You were thinking evil thoughts. Confess, confess, confess. Com and they tell, so by the time they tell their disciple, the disciple goes, why did you, uh, or nothing, may just say, have you prayed? Are you? Depends on their disciple and it depends on the situation. Uh, you have to stop. You can't do that again. Don't ever try it. Where were you? Uh -huh. When did you go? You should have gone home. Why were you there at all? A uh, whole office went. So? So? What has pastor thought? So this great evil of that we call, uh, uh, never even happens because you have learned to walk in the light. As opposed to, no, since, do you know the other ones I always fall? They are the ones that say, well, that day wasn't really anything. In fact, they don't even think about it. I held their hand, you know, I held it too long. I kept holding it, holding it. <laughs> and I'm, you're think, you knew evil entered your mind, you know. Today, tomorrow, next week, three months down the road. Maybe set and start working on her too. You're lost thing, things are happening in your mind. Then you hit, bam, you fall. Then you confess. How to be, I should write a small book, how to be, how to guarantee your defeat. What was that? Because you've been told, even when you commit it, they say confess to God. What about when it comes out on TV? Worldwide. Bam. Millions of people. You, do, you know, again, when you're a small preacher, you don't understand Jack. You don't understand. There are people when they say, what happened last year, September or November, December with International House of Prayer? Uh, uh, people that their YouTube channel has 2 million followers. Do you understand that the majority of people that follow people do not subscribe? So if it's 2 million you're seeing, do you know how many are following for real? So you can stand here and say, the Lord told me something. And 25 million people make adjustments in their life. You said, I'm calling a fast and 30 million people fast. 200,000 pastors tell their churches we are fasting. That man of God whom we respect so much. Then Satan strikes him. And Satan has been doing it calmly. Calmly. Igba, he breaks their knees. He's just doing it. Calm. He's very calm. Take note, unbelievers almost say nothing about it. Though. The church handles it. Oh, other Christians are the ones that <laughs> rip them to pieces. Unbelievers barely say anything about it. So Satan has been having a big party. Who wants Satan to have party over their head here? Who has said in their heart, God forbid. What is the method? The method is walk in the light. Walk in the light. This has been a favorite topic I've preached on for many, many years. It's also a major reason we've had a lot of victory. It's why you can hear people stand and say, I, I used to be, I used to have seven boyfriends or girlfriends. I used to do this. And you hear them say, I've not committed this. I've not kissed a person. I've not done anything. In spite of how I was, I've not done this for the past six years, seven years. How is it possible? It is possible if you will obey the words of God, which come like the rain, 
which come. If you place yourself in, remember how I started, the word is light, the light is word. If you place yourself under God's words and strive to obey it, there will be no great stories, no horror events. There will be no matters of great terror gripping the souls of God's people. You will not have people falling away. Matters must be brought to the light. They have to be. For the sake of all that is good, do not cover up evil on yourself or on your brother. Leviticus, I said 19, do, do not cover up evil. Do not hate your brother. Don't cover up evil. Conceal it and you progress. Uh, sorry, don't conceal it so you can progress. Uncover it so you can progress. Practice it when you're nobody. Practice it till you are somebody. Practice it after you are somebody. And we will always know that you are just a man like us. Like Elijah. And your words and prayers will still have power. You will still be able to open the heavens and close it. Are you understanding? Refuse to practice it and say you don't understand. It was too shameful. Let someone else expose you. Then it looks like they caught you. And look at the ripple effect. But it is very hard to practice if you've not been practicing it from a younger age. Are you understanding? You didn't practice it when you were small, when you committed small things. Are you going to practice it when everybody knows your name? Now, even though this thing I'm describing is not happening in Nigeria, or even when it happens, it doesn't matter. The church grows larger because the uh, whatever is happening. Do I support what the white people do? No, I've said it many times. They, they start saying, um, uh, you shouldn't be ministry. I don't understand all that nonsense. Shouldn't be ministry, shouldn't be ministry at all. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with them. They say you should be above reproach. <laughs> so nobody in the Bible had reproach and God was still using. I think they go to an extreme. But Africans go to the other extreme. It doesn't matter what they reproach. The show must go on. It's crazy. It's just madness. As usual, the answer is in the middle. May the Lord help us. How many questions? Three questions. Then we pray. I'd like you to explain the thing about moving away from God's presence as backsliding. What about what David said about God being everywhere he is? Sir, with all the illustration, all the drama, all the actors. I want to ask... Hosanna. Who was the person that testified? They shouted so much. I want to ask how much you pay your crowd to. So I can settle them to be shouting for me too. <laughs> Are they costly? <laughs> Is a paid crowd there? <laughs> when she was testifying, they're like, hey! uh, The person that asked me this question, I hope you're a member. So talk to your shepherd, the person that you're accountable to. Ask them more. Let them take some time and describe Maybe they will act again what I just acted. Because I don't know what you're asking me about. God is everywhere. does not mean you have not moved away from God. I didn't say God backstay. I say you. <laughs> you mean as you're pulling away, God disappears and appears behind you and all that. What are you talking about? God is in heaven. You're on earth. The more you move away from heavenly things, you are moving away from God, okay? That God is everywhere, huh? Eh? So do you enjoy everything that God's presence gives you instantly in the same way? When we pray and the presence of God comes down heavily, is it not a difference in his being present? Presence is a relative term, okay? You can enter a room and say, I sense my father's presence. Everything here reminds me of him. On the other hand, you can say, my father is present and he's physically there. Huh? Okay. I don't know how much to explain it more than that. Talk to someone. Next question. Concerning walking in the light, does it include confessing the sins you committed before you're born again? Sometimes, yes, because some of the afflictions we have, in fact, a lot are connected to sins you committed before you're born again. Example, if you got pregnant before you got born again, when you gave your life to Christ, the child does not die. He's now eight years old. He doesn't die. The day you gave your life to Christ, you don't go back home and that child is dead. He will keep living. In Jesus' name. Amen. He will live and not die. It's called consequence. When you commit sin, when you break a glass and you say, Daddy, I'm sorry, 
I broke your glass. I know you told me not to touch it. Even if he slaps you or he forgives you and says it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean the glass will join back. The consequence of your carelessness or disobedience is that the glass breaks. That's the consequence. So when you see your father drinking water there after with a plastic cup like the rest of the house, that's a consequence. When your friend comes and sees your father drink with a plastic cup because he's too poor or has not gotten around to buying that and no, you're not able to afford at that time and your friend despises your father, that's a consequence of the broken glass. Many people act like once you're forgiven, consequences disappear. It's not true. That's not what the Bible shows you. God forgave Adam and Eve. He gave them clothes made of animal skin. He still kept them outside the garden. It's called consequence. Okay, again, since the matter of sin is not often understood by many children of God, and many pastors have handled it very wrongly. And they say, no, once you're forgiven, all listen, that your sin, do you remember when I was explaining atonement? Do you remember why I showed atonement? It covers. That's what the word means, to cover. It's not the same as deleting. Uh, but you see, he removes it as far as the east is from the west. Yes. The east is from the west. He removes it. Someone has to pay the price. That's why Jesus came. The price still has to be paid. There's consequence to sin. You're not supposed to dwell and feel bad and feel bad. When he forgives you, and, or if you sin against someone, they forgive you. You're supposed to have peace in your heart. Then brace yourself on how to handle the consequences. Keep that plastic cup for daddy separate too. Let it be a special plastic cup. Walk around it, but don't act like. But I said, I'm sorry now. I thought this cup would do. The tumbler will come together. No, it won't. That's what happened to David. When you read the story, that's so you can understand it. That's what happened to Israel. In spite of having Josiah show up and lead the nation in revival and restoration. And they celebrated the feast of tabernacles. And it was the greatest since the time of Joshua. It was awesome. A great king was Josiah. After the sins of Manasseh, the Bible says, after he died, Josiah died. Judgment still came on Israel. So, please, it's okay to confess sins. But there's a difference between the sins you committed before you were born again and the ones you committed after. The ones before you were born again are called your past sins. You see that in the Bible, at different places. Then there are the sins you committed that we've talked about today that you should confess, usually. Those are sins. But what if you're struggling after you gave your life to Christ under the consequence of sins you committed before? Maybe you picked a sickness, HIV or something. Is it normal that when people get born again, their HIV gets healed instantly? Many times, no. Are there people who get healed of different kinds of chronic sickness? Yes, many. Both things happen. So if they ask you, why are you like this? And you're ashamed to say, oh, I struggle with this sickness. It's something I picked before I got born again. Is that not confessing? Confessing means to open up, to acknowledge, to say aloud what is. That's all. That's what confession means. If you confess that, oh, yes, I, I used to be very moral. I had, I, I, I had this, so I'm on medication. It's perfectly okay. Why would you hide it? In fact, that should be the easiest sin to confess. Sins from before he knew Jesus. After he knew Jesus too. It may help. Does that mean you should confess it before you give your life to Christ? Maybe not. When you're coming to Jesus, you're confessing Jesus is Lord. You're acknowledging that Jesus is the master of everything. That's what you confess, not your sins. But acknowledging and thinking about your life and the kind of life you lived and realizing how bad it was and how much pain you caused God and men is good. People that repent like that usually repent better. Than people who just say, just say after me, and they are laughing. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus can change heart. They are the ones that get born again and go back within one and a half weeks. In fact, that's too long, three days. Because they are not usually serious people. So, please, don't struggle so much with walking in the light. Many people, we struggle so hard. You struggle as they to make your life easier. And it makes your life a thousand times more difficult. Hidden sin makes your life a thousand times more difficult. Don't be like David. 
Don't be like people. When so many things have happened, if David confessed his sin very early, many of the people that blaspheme God would not have blasphemed God and God would be less offended. By the time his sons were killing his, his fellow sons and his son was sleeping with his wives on a roof. Mm. You know it was bad. But God had already said it. Like I said earlier, if David is the one, if we go first and confess, the effect can never be compared to when you are caught. God sent Nathan before David said it's true. If David had gone to Nathan or to the priest and said, I have a matter to confess. Do you remember when people, oh, let me not go there so you don't misunderstand. I just want you to understand that you have to be very careful about what is the normal practice, especially amongst Protestants, non-Roman Catholics. The Catholic way is not good either. Once a year doesn't mean jack. But as a lifestyle, I know I've also told people sometimes, you don't have to confess everything. Hey, today again, this happened. I beg, go and suffer a little. Just go first. Don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> you can tell God some things and leave it. But there are things you don't leave it with God. Especially if it's been a secret. How many of you confessed something and it seemed this power was broken over you? Almost permanently. The, after, after you said it the first time, it's like, Phew, that thing lost its power. Raise your hands, let others see. The power of walking in the light is unbelievable. But most Christians will never know till they die because their pastors don't teach them. And they don't read their Bible either. How did I know it? My pastor did not teach me. I read in my Bible. And I studied it and I cross-checked. I kept looking. I kept saying, ah, why, 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 why is this not done? It's not done because we tend to do what we are told. So when your pastor thinks sometimes, me, uh, what about me? Who like, hmm. no, I cannot confess what I've done. So you tell the members to, don't worry. But the truth is some things need to be confessed. Not everything. But especially if it has the potential to be significant. It's even better for your conscience to be too soft. Then with time, we can say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Next time, just tell God. But that one that has official hiding places, official. Never have anything to say. Why do you think you keep hearing testimonies of victory and you keep wondering when will my own happen? Those people have learned the secret of walking in the light. Is this okay? Do you have to confess to someone you sinned against when they don't even have a club? It may be like talking about them, the things they do behind. So this is an example of what sometimes you may need to confess. Yes, I'm sorry I said this about you. I used to say this about you. I did this sometimes. There's a sister in this church that that was the first thing she said during lockdown. At home, she got born again during the lockdown and sent a message to one of her classmates who has been here for years and said, when you got born again, when, when you changed in year one or year two, year, year two, I used to speak against you. I'm sorry. Does she have to? Not really. But she did. It's okay. Some, some things people confess to people. If you didn't do something or take something, it, most confessions have to do, especially if you took something that belongs to someone. You may have taken someone's name too. You may have caused them. It's okay to tell, but sometimes not so. And it's okay to ask someone specifically, a leader, a, a leader, I, I, used, I did this against, should I tell them? And they may tell you, maybe, maybe not. But the leaders are not the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit says you should do something just to be. Just to be. Learn to ask God, but also talk to people. Spiritual leadership, and they will guide you. They will help you. They will give you counsel. But generally speaking, if they have no clue about it, it's not everything you can say. And I want to tell you, there was this time I told Mama about you and said that you always walk like a, like a talkie. I told her three times. Then I told Nono 
four times. Then I told, please leave us alone. Please go and go and eat. Please. Don't confess that one. It's, it's not that type. There are people, it is Christians. You could go to someone and say, you know, I apologize for all the times. There are things, there are times I, I attacked you behind your back. I wasn't born again that time. There are people that are so indisciplined, they'll ask you, what I tell me the things you used to say. <laughs> That's how you know you met a baby. An absolute baby. Tell me the things. Like what? Eh, eh. So you're the ones that used to talk against me. Tell me. Is that all? Is that all? That's all the sign that you know you shouldn't have come at all. Because <laughs> all they are thinking about is them. It's ridiculous. That's a bit different from saying those times that your clothes used to be on the ground. I'm the one that used to pull it and keep on the ground. <laughs> it's mostly with physical things. It's called restitution. You can't restitute words enough. So it's usually physical, material things you need to restitute. Is that all you said four? Is that three or four? That's all. All right, we are going to pray about the things we've heard. It's a bit like Sunday's message. It's also heavy, yes? Heavy, heavy messages. Everything I thought I would preach, I've not preached, not the way I thought. If I, pre I think I may preach on Sunday, who knows? But if I tell you in a few sentences what the Lord has been telling me for this. You know, I got here on Wednesday and then on Thursday or so, I saw a prophetic word one of our brethren had. And he was repeating the things with almost the passages I got on Wednesday morning. When I was about to pray, I was just, and he kept multiple scriptures. And the summary was about judgments and testings and trials. And it's coming on the church. Serious stuff. And like I've warned you for years, if your faith is built on a man, you will fall. Your faith must be built on Jesus Christ. I've told you over and over again about people who follow people. You cannot follow people. In fact, it is God allowing stories come out to show you that you are a quack. So a man falls, you fall. So you are not attached to divine. To Christ. You are attached to one of his branches. And God is allowing it to happen. So they will remove the fake from the real. Not that man of God. That man of God may be real. At least he's a branch. He was attached to Christ. It's you that was fake. You were not attached to Christ. Do you understand what I just said? You're not called to be a twig. He said, I am divine and you are the branches. Isn't that what the Bible says? So how are you attached to a person? That means you're a leaf. You're a leaf. Are you hearing me clearly? So if I shared what I thought I stood out here to share, it would have involved plenty big scriptures. Judgment is coming on Babylon and judgment is coming on Jerusalem, Zion. Those are the two big things God has been floating over my head since Wednesday. Very strongly. I thought I'll share on Wednesday. Then I thought I'll share it today. Hasn't happened. You know, I've learned not to push. Somebody really needed to hear the things I said here today. You're here. If you think this was... <laughs> This is that type that is all that is left is to mention your name. God was shooting straight at you. I would advise you not to play with it. There are so many clowns. So many clowns. Hearts of stone. God will talk to you. Do any hearts. Do is your mate. Don't be a clown. God just described the future for some people. Listen, you can't tell when you, you meet God. You can never tell when you're going to meet God. So what does the scripture say? It says prepare to meet your God. Wise people prepare. You don't hope for the best. You prepare to meet your God. What I shared here is how to prepare. Are you understanding? Walk in the light. We walk in the light. I want you to thank the Lord. Listen, many people don't hear the things that push them into light. And that's why they don't walk in light. They would have, but they don't even hear. They don't know it. They are not hearing it. All they are hearing is, God bless you. And then you bash Nigerian government. Then you're always bashing someone else. Then you bash the Muslims. Then you bash. Judgment is coming on Jerusalem. I've heard it and heard it. I've become alarmed. When I heard this newsletter, I went like, oh, this is, oh God, wow. Wednesday. News started breaking on Thursday and Friday. Levels of wala. about that big ministry I'm talking about. That has been a great blessing to me as a person. 
It's judgment. So I can't react like a normal person because all the words God gave me was that he's the one doing it. It's him. So I don't even have time to bash people. It's God. When God is the one beating you, who will hold his hand? He's God now. I want you to, I give you 15 seconds. Say, thank you that I'm hearing these things while I can do something about it. Tell him, thank you. While you can do something about it. It's a big deal. Lord, we are grateful that we can, that we can, that we can, that we can hear these things. Thank God for ears to hear. Ears that can hear. We are grateful. Thank you, good father. In the name of Jesus, we praise. Amen. Now you're asking the Lord, this matter of light, I've heard it before. I've not heard it like this before. I want to live in the light. Keep it simple. Don't go complicated. Don't go into too much. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Just say, Lord, I want to walk in this light, this light, this light. I want to live a life in the light. I want to remove excuses for shame on the day of judgment. I want to live in the light. I want to move in the light. I want to be in the light. I want to experience the light continually. Continually. Continually, Lord God, your light is that which I desire. I want to live, oh God, in obedience to your words daily. Ask God to deliver you from opinions of men. I don't care. Deliver me from what people think. What people think. Let them think. Help me be free of what people think. Rid me of what people think. Rid me of what people think. Oh, Lord, our God. Thank you, good Father. Thank you, good Father. Thank you, good Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Finally, I'm going to ask you to say to the Lord, help me bring out, may my life not be a life of secrets anymore. The pain will be, to, listen, don't mind people who harden their hearts when they hear the truth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why does it matter? Eventually, the matter will be brought up. By then, it has grown. If you deal with yawn, it's called nipping things in the bud while it's fresh and small. Because things grow, good and evil. Do you remember the wheat and the tares? They grew. If things are removed when they are tiny in your life, if you will not have all these secrets, your joy, your comparable joy, now and forever, will be so much greater. But if you hide and hide and hide, ah, God. <sighs> you go from God's hands into a wilderness. It didn't have to be so. Why does it have to be so? Some of you are looking at the Bible portion to read. Maybe it's okay for some of you to read the book of Jeremiah. Just read the book. It has just 50 something chapters. Not much. 50. Just read it. See the church because Jeremiah is a prophecy of what's coming on the church. You might as well get ready. I've been saying this for a while, for years now. In Jeremiah is that, that will happen to the church. The book of Jeremiah will happen to the body of Christ. So get ready or stick your head in the sand and watch what plays out. It will be bad. It will be sad. It will be terrifying. But he will have a remnant. Final prayer. Father, I'm asking, help me bring, rid me of the, the, the pride that makes me want to have secrets. And just rid me of this thing. Please, just, just, please, 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 please. Please, please, help me pull it out and place on the table. Lord God Almighty, may I not keep things that fester and burn. Help me learn to confess my sins to righteous people who can help me and pray for me. Help me, help me. Rid me of the foolish pride that will result in disaster. May I not be as many who were destroyed before I spoke. May I not be like those that carried it to the grave. 
I beseech you by your mercies. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, good Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, I'm asking for everyone here. I ask for forgiveness for all the times we put our mouth in matters that are beyond us. Even times we've attempted to condemn you, the Most High God. Forgive us for the many, many times. Oh yeah, pray along. Say, Father, Father forgive, me forgive me for all the times I've spoken, spoken in an accusing manner an accusing against, you. against you. Forgive me. For holding, you responsible for holding you responsible for the sins of others. For sins of others. Forgive, us. Forgive us. Forgive me. Forgive me. Father, I'm praying, Father, I'm praying that, from today, that from today I will be a person, be a person who, focuses on walking in the light, who focuses on walking in the light as you are in the light. As May I be a true child of God, full of light, with nothing to be ashamed about. Keep me free all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking for everyone as they will go forth from here and confess and open up and be sincere and and endure the shame. Let the great deliverances that we have seen happen with so many others. One of our brothers here confessed to his parents who were so afraid he switched off his phone after confessing. He sent the confession and he off the phone. He was so terrified. His father is a pastor. As of this moment, all his siblings, all his family, almost everybody in his family, they are, well, even if they are not here, they are like part of our family by their own speakings and confessions. They've become part. The same thing he thought would result in great shame resulted in his different siblings also getting to know the Lord or know him better. Getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Some are with us right here. That thing, that coming into the light unleashed much grace and mercy on his household and many other blessings. That's what light does. You think it will make you ashamed. No, it will make you bright. It will make you beautiful. That's what light does. Well, a life that the blood has cleansed of all unrighteousness. Such a life has nothing to be ashamed of. Your testimony becomes a great source of deliverance for others. And frees you as opposed to your bones becoming dust under the hand of God's conviction. Father, I'm asking that there be a release right now over the person who, 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 I rebuke the spirits that are so loud. Those spirits have been given so much permission that is like they own the dustbin of secrets. I bind the spirits that have taken control. You are strong, but the stronger one is here. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the angels and messengers of the King, bind you in the name of Jesus and remove your hold from off of the mind of those who have hidden things till they, their mind is, is like a small black hole. Receive grace to walk in the light. Amen. May the light of Jesus flood your being. Amen. May the shining Jesus shine ever brighter within you. Amen. May you experience what it means to be free like you have never known before. Amen. Father, ask for wisdom and direction, your restraint and your yoke. Amen. May none of them speak out of turn. Or act foolishly in confusion. Give them clarity. Order their steps. Thank you. Let great light go forth. And may we be messengers of light. Thank you. 
And may the great judgments that are swelling over the church. When it comes, may we be found clean. May we be amongst a remnant company that is not taken captive. Like you said, the prince of this world comes and he has nothing on me. May we be able to say the enemy has nothing on us. Amen. If you want that, say amen. amen. That the enemy comes. Jesus said it. The prince of this world comes. He has nothing on me. May the enemy have nothing on us. Amen. Thank you, great father. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, ask if you have an offering in cash, take it. We are going to make a transfer, note the numbers and transfer it later. Father, I'm asking for every offering you receive it. Everyone that has been given already, ask that you accept it. Use it for your glory and praise. Ask for a replenishment. Ask that they are bound unto every good work. In Jesus' name, bless their water and bread. Order their steps. May your angels go with them. And let the heavens stay open over these ones. Oh, messengers, messengers, continually come. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. Angels ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. Come to you as you sleep. As you go about your business. May the Lord come to you. May his counsel rest with you. May you know things you have never heard before. May you see the plans. May the scrolls of God's intentions for you be opened. And may the plans for this last day that have been piling up without people showing up to read them. May we participate. May we be good messengers. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.